Hey, I'm down here with uh, Mike and Kim Brill. Um, Mike's, uh, Mike and Kim have been down here at Coral Reef for a long time uh, and are avid um, boaters, uh, pilots, uh, and Bahamas enthusiasts. Um, they organized the Coral Reef trip up to uh, the Abacos this year and last year. Two years, is that right? Just last year. Oh, just exactly. last year? Yeah. Awesome. So how many times have you, you been to the Bahamas over the last 15, 20 years, you figure? <laughs> it's like, it's like 100, wouldn't you say? Yeah. At I least mean, every, 100. Every year, at least, you know, five or six times. Yeah. So because of that, um, it seems to me that I see South Florida really kind of in touch with the Bahamas, um, where you really feel a kinship to it. Is this kind yes. of what we're feeling over there? It's a family, right? It is a family. Yeah. And then when they say family islands, I guess there's really something that goes into it. Yeah. So we were really lucky to be able to hook up with you guys, and, and I saw some early efforts that you did out there. We raised a little bit of money down here, and it's really people, a lot of people from California, from people that know us, and they're like, hey, we want this put uh, to a very direct um, use. And when I when I saw you and some of the things that you're doing, we said, that's somebody we want to support. And I think we were over at the shop yesterday when we were loading up, and I think about the same second, we both said, well, the Northern Abacos, we understand that elbow, um, guana, these things, but how about something like Mar um, Moore's Island? Right. And you came up at the, the same time. I've been to Moore's. We're probably the only two people around here who've ever been to Moore's. I but uh, got stone crabs out of there. That's bingo! Okay, perfect. So tell me, I know you guys did a relief flight down to Moore's. What what was it like when you flew in, and how was it? Well, actually, the, the physically the island's in a lot better shape than the Abacos. So their houses from the from the air, yep. are structurally okay i mean they might not have roofs or they might have rec roofs but they have walls all right which is a lot different than the abacos so our understanding is is that people from marsh harbor are coming over if they have family in moors okay but they don't have the any resources. connections or resources so uh although everybody they have a ship when we were there that brought people over like a cargo type you uh, bet. ship, but they have no fuel, they have no generators, they're very low on water, um, they didn't have any canned goods, so the pilots are all on a WhatsApp together where we all communicate, so last night after we spoke, I said, has anybody been to Moors yet? Yeah. And one of the pilots passed by and said, yes, we need to go, and awesome. by last night, we landed with five planes full of supplies, um, what you gave us, uh, was in my plane and two or three pickup trucks met us we had to buzz the town to let them know we were coming you bet and they had no idea they were so thankful uh, it was so hard and it was super safe those. on the ground when you got there it was, was well a, controlled right away, people were happy guard. right yeah an armed guard so, it was amazing to see all the, the pilots from South Florida out there one pregnant woman out there flying her second flight today oh, no giving kidding. their all it just reassures you that there's big heart the people that love that love the people from the Bahamas and are, are giving back yeah and you know we get a little bit of heat because they're like oh you guys are messing it up but I think that the, the deal is if you know the Bahamas and you know the out islands around deep water, um, Pelican Point, High Rock, uh, Sweetings, Moors, these are areas that people would have forgotten about. Is that about what you're seeing when you get on the ground? Yes. And it, it is. I was looking when we flew to see if, you know, there, there's some isolated areas and could I land on that road? But yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, need to yeah. get into much trouble doing it, right? Yeah. But yeah. you just want to help. You want to do whatever you can to help. And I knew that Moors was isolated and actually... They've kind of given up us a list, so I think my next flight will also be to Moore's as well. Excellent, excellent. And nobody wanted to leave Moore's, so once we were there in light, uh, we heard that Scotland Key had people from Man of War. Uh, we flew over Scotland, but there was at least seven, eight planes on the ground there. Yeah. So we circled around and went into Treasure, although we knew it was busy when I was there before. I saw a lot of people on the lining the runway, and. Uh, Kim couldn't believe that there was basically like living out of a tent you had set yeah. up for your soccer kids. So yeah. let me ask you, we're hearing some stuff about um, about people cr trying to discourage private efforts. From my understanding, the private efforts in the first five days were the only efforts that got in. Is that what your, your understanding is from the ground? That's what the locals are telling us when we go in. They are so incredibly grateful. Yeah. 
that and that their government has kind of forgotten about them today. We saw an armed guard there and and they were just incredibly grateful. All right, so it makes a big difference. Yeah. And, and understandably, things change as things go on and then we'll start to support the larger organizations in the latter days. But in this initial stage, it's really a life-saving effort. Now, what I understand is that there was um, uh, a lot of donated items that probably were not useful. Now, uh, like we're understanding that like clothing is not a big deal, but it's funny because a lot of people aren't taking water, but then you went to Morris, they didn't have water, right? So it's very specific to a geographic area by island. Right. Is that what you found? And not only, I think on the individual's islands, by community. So when I, I met a Bahamian fella on Friday that was helping out here, who was originally, uh, his parents were Haitian. Okay. So he's in the Haitian community, and he said no one had given anything to the Haitian church. I understand. And that was basically a shelter. So that first load of supplies all went direct. It was two two or three planes. Mine was the first one in, and it was the first thing that those Haitians have, had received, and that was on Friday. You bet. Gotcha. So. Now, it's interesting because you're hearing all this stuff, you know, and I, I hear it all around that, like, oh, the violence. If we put things into perspective, and we say that it, it, it's a desperate situation, that it's a very real thing where people are trying to feed their kids and get water to their kids. And, and so we, we, we certainly have to recognize that it's about the desperation and, yes. and about making sure that we can take care of these guys. And, and I tell you what, uh, what you guys have done is absolutely outstanding. Uh, if there's any way we can support you at all anymore, you guys are on the front lines. You did a freaking great job and uh, couldn't be happier to be involved in this. And uh, thanks. I I anything else we can do to, um, uh, in next steps, I, I suppose it's gonna be about supporting people on uh, the evacuees to other islands and That's even in Miami, I suppose, today, right? And oh yeah, <laughs> I meant to say that. Um, so you're bringing in supplies, but in addition to that, you're actually bringing people out. Is that we right? We brought people out. We had a, a lady that came up to us with four kids, and unfortunately, I only had four seats, so okay. we couldn't take her. Um, but they have to get out, yeah. and although they can't come into the States, and Nassau, the red tape is just too much, just to get them to any of the family items were islands were just something as simple as getting to use their cell phone to take tell their family that they're okay yeah they had no cell service no water no power no way to take a shower if they can just get a hotel room and then organize a flight because you have to book a flight online to oh, get yeah. people out and yeah and how are you gonna do that online if you got no power no communication to so do yeah. today we took a group to bimini and the, the we just took down the phone numbers of their family members close family members took pictures of them we got back to the states called them and then text them the picture and told them that they were in bimini and at least they were where they were safe they knew they were alive running water where they had um cell service all right and they can start the next move because it's kind of baby steps all right, so I, I guess it is a transition over from early relief efforts like you guys have taken and risked a little bit, obviously. Um, now we're going to transition into the next phase, hopefully, whereby we have people that are on the ground that are that are finalizing, unfortunately, finalizing the search and rescue effort, and they're going to identification efforts there. Clearly, it's a lot bigger deal than what we're seeing on the media, and this is why uh, talking to people that have been on the ground over there and uh, it just means a lot to everybody that donated. Man, we had a lot of people that don't know us, that just wanted to help. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, my only commitment to the people that donated money and goods was we're gonna put this to direct use. And honestly, I can't say that we got any better direct use than uh, with what you guys have done. And efforts to islands that, that the big groups don't even know about. Uh, to be honest with you, I think this is a big dang deal, uh, and I applaud you for your efforts, and I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you so well, thank much. You for thank your you for Awesome. Really appreciate it, guys.